<laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's KB5MIQ, big boy. I apologize. This video is going to have to be backwards today because I've tried to do this twice this morning and evidently I'm messing up, so I had to turn it where I could make sure it's recording. Uh, we're going to talk a few things today about all oh, 10 meter or 10 meter round table, echo link, and uh, QRZ logbooks. So, first off, last Monday night we had a wild night in a round table. We had uh, 10 extra check-ins. The band was open, the best I've heard it open in months, especially at night. You know, 10 meters, if it's open in the daytime, sometimes it kind of dies out at night, but it was open well past 9 o'clock. Like I said, we had 10 extra check-ins. had four of them was techs, and uh, we really enjoy having these guys checking in with us, new techs. Uh, a couple of my listeners, and I've actually made contact with several listeners here the last few while and uh, Monday night we had a K8 NRY and KO4 CRU both checked in with us both of them subscribed to the channel I appreciate it I uh, made an echo link contact with KO4 VFA previously I've uh, talked to VE6 Alpha Alpha Tango AD4 Quebec Papa and W5 JRJ checked in with us last night so man we appreciate all these guys who checking in with us on our 10 meter round table and if y'all hear us, please check in. Guys, I I love to talk to you guys. If uh shoot me a comment or an email, if y'all got a net, I will do my best to check into it. Or if you want to catch me on Echo Link or or uh, on my round table or other frequency, let me know and I'll do my best to make it happen. I'm not on the air all the time. I've got other stuff going on around here, a small cattle farm and things like that. So but I'll do my best to make contact with you. And I appreciate all y'all checking in with us and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, 10 meters, I'm hoping it's first picking up more if we have that happen more often. Because that's really fun when you have people from around the country checking in. Uh, on the 10 meter, uh, while we're talking about it, WD5HKV has made a homemade 10 meter rotatable dipole, single band rotatable dipole. And he made it out of old tent poles, and he decided when he made this, he wasn't going to buy anything. Just for the fact if he can get it tuned, and he's making a video of it, and I'll have it pegged in here hopefully in my next video. Just show people that you can make antennas out of anything that'll work good. And we'll probably do an experiment on here like we did on the other one, one night. So look for that coming up. He's a good antenna builder and been doing it a long time. So hopefully it'll help some of you guys out, save you some money down the road. Um, Echo Link. I've talked about Echo Link a little bit in the past. Haven't really gone in depth with it. Um, and you'll hear a lot of old hams condemning Echo Link because it's not real radio because you're using a cell phone. But it's a mode that the FCC has approved we can use. So. I got no problem with it, uh, especially new guys. If you're still on a budget, maybe unsure about what radio to buy, and uh, you're wanting to get on the air, free download. You have to jump through a little bit of hoops to get it set up. The biggest hoop is you'll have to log into the FCC website and download your official copy of your license, which is available on the website, and send it to Echo Link. But once you do that, they'll help you get it set up. Good way to make contacts. You make DX contacts on there. Right after I got on it, I made, I talked to Ham and Barbados one night. Uh, like I said, KO4BFA, I talked to him in Florida the other day on it. And, and I've talked about this before. With You may live in an area where there's a lot of two-meter traffic on your local repeaters where you can buy you a cheap talkie and, and have fun with it. That's great. In the area I live in, especially if when I go west, there's very little traffic on there. So if you're depending on a local repeater for QSOs, you may be out of luck. With this, you can look up and hit the repeaters anywhere in the world with it. So check it out. You young guys especially that are more cell phone savvy and computer savvy than us old boomers, y'all probably enjoy it. So it's a good good way to get a new guy on the air. And uh, the only thing once you're operating with it you'll need to get used to is a little more lag time from the time you hit the transmit button until you hear their return on their conversation. That's just due to 
way it's set up. But it's nice, just a few seconds. So check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. QRZ.com. I love their website. I used their uh, practice test years ago when I was upgrading my ticket. Uh, I used their logbook. I just used the free version. I'm not a subscriber. But I've considered subscribing. But I've read their subscriptions, and I really don't understand what you're getting. So somebody will explain their subscriptions to me. I'd appreciate it. And also, I like using their logbook. And I didn't know for a long time that when I first started that you could confirm contacts on her. I thought it was just a way for you to keep track of your stuff on digital instead of writing it down. But I learned how to do that. But my question is this. Uh, sometimes I try to confirm a contact for somebody and the time doesn't match up. And I have emailed them and they've sent me their time or like in the case of uh, this Echolink contact, I had the wrong mode put down. I didn't realize it because Echolink is a VOI mode on there. Now, any of y'all got some ideas on when you do a, uh, a log entry on there to make it easier to confirm with the other guy, please let me know. Let me tell you how I do this. I monitor and I hear, say, a DX station I want to try to contact. I'll go ahead and have their call sign pulled up. And if I make the contact, get the QSO going, while I'm talking to them, I'll reach over and hit log and put the info in and log it right then. And sometimes, and generally, I'll go ahead and ask them to confirm it. And I have better luck getting somebody else to confirm it than what I'm trying to confirm it for some reason. But if you can give me some tips on that, because evidently I'm getting, I'm not logging at the same time they are. If there's a way I can fix that, let me know. I was talking to Cody the other night, W5DLX, about it. And Cody's a real good ham and a good sport put up with us old boomers anyway. We was talking about it. He said, well, big boy, I've got my computer set for UTC time. And I go, oh, you can do that? So now I've got my computer set for UTC time. That may help me. I still keep a written log. I'll never give up my written log book. I really enjoy having... A written log here for everything but like on the round table it's quicker for me to sit there and put them in that qrz log especially if we got them coming in pretty fast and me take time to write them down because if i try to write in a hurry they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna be legible so any information you all can share with me please comment it or email it to me i'd appreciate it okay uh, talking about one more touch on the price of used gear and new gear because hobby still relatively expensive especially getting an hf but it's expensive as you want to make it but this gives you some comparisons this was a post that was on a uh, ham radio earlier this week my old swan ss 200a was 779 dollars in 1973 that's four thousand eight hundred seventy seven dollars in today's money like i said in an earlier video of mine my first 701 I got in 91, I got off the original owner, which this one's supposed to be off the original owner also. But the first one I got, I actually got the matching desk mic. It come with a power supply, matching power supply, all the boxes, book, everything. And uh, W5MAS, the ham who picked it up for me in Dallas, brought me a 1979 copy of QST magazine had the first ad when they first brought that radio out. And in 79, it was a $1,695 radio. In 91, I give 300 for it. I give 150 for this one used at Queen Willoughby and Ham Fest last September. Now, price comparison, think about this. The 701 is just a 160 through 10 meter radio, single sideband, CW, and ready. That's all the modes it's got on. 100 watt radio, come with a matching power supply and desk mic. In 06, when I bought this Yaesu FT897D new, and I believe I purchased it from AES, I think I bought it right before they went out of business. If not, I bought it from HRO because I didn't, I, MTC wasn't in business at the time. I can't remember. I'd have to dig the receipt out, but I either give I caught. I remember catching it on sale. It was either six ninety nine or seven ninety nine. 
and I can't remember which. Let's say seven ninety nine. Just excuse the higher price. Eight hundred dollars. It didn't have power supply, so I already had, I already had a power supply. But it come with a mic, and it's a HF six meters. VHF, UHF, all mode with a general coverage receiver. That's at eight hundred dollars. That's over half. That's half price what the seven hundred one cost to send me now. So, yes, HF radios are still expensive, but they're not as expensive as they once was, and you get a lot more features on them than you once got. Think about that. That's all right. MTC has still got a bunch of holiday sales going, and he's putting a lot of used gear on his site, and it's changing daily. And uh, most of his used gear has got a 30-day warranty on it. It'll tell you at the on the on whatever you look at whether it's got a warranty or not. So check him out. Good place to get some used gear. Uh, Cowtown Amateur Radio Club Ham Fest is the weekend of the 14th. I'm going to tag their advertising on the end of this. I'd love to be able to go to it, but I can't. That weekend, I got family coming in for my birthday, so I can't get out of town that weekend. Plus, I got to haul cows to the sale. I was going to do it today, and they got out, and it's raining, so I've got to, I've got that old looking at me this week. Uh, Irving Amateur Radio Club's got one coming up sometime in March. I'll have the their little sale paper tagged on the end of this. Farmersville Amateur Radio Club has their first Saturday Sidewalk sale every month. That's started. I'll have their advertisement on here also. Uh, remember your ham club pages on Facebook, uh, Four States Amateur Radio, Cowtown Amateur Radio, Dallas Amateur Radio, Shreveport Amateur Radio, and Farmersville Amateur Radio. And look up where you live for Facebook pages for your ham radio club. Good source of information. Other good Facebook pages, ham radio, flea market and trading posts, ham radio, amateur radio Elmer's, uh, Texas Amateur Ham Radio. So keep an eye on those. Remember our uh, 10 meter round table. I'm still going to keep plugging that. We're on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday nights, 7.30 Central Standard Time. And if the band's open, we'll probably be on 28.470 because there's usually a couple of nets running on 28.450 we don't want to interfere with. But we will always be in the novice tech portion of 10 meters. Remember the three call signs, W5DLX, WD5HKV, KB5MIQ. Listen for any of those three and please check in with us. We'd love to get check-ins on this. Uh, remember my email is posted on my QRZ page. So if you've got any questions or any comments about QRZ to me, please send them to me. I'd appreciate it. Well, ham radio cats walking around on my legs now. Number one fan, Aaron. Uh, so this is KB5MIQ. Thanks everybody who subscribed to the channel. We've hit 527. KB5MIQ, big boy. 75.